Hello and welcome to another Common Core Geometry video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing unit number 9, lesson number 5 on tangents to circles. So, so far we've seen a lot of different line segments or lines that relate to circles such as chords, radii, and diameters and we've seen relationships that they have in terms of their angles and in terms of their lengths. Today what we're going to start doing is looking at a very, very important idea which is what's known as a tangent to a circle. So let's jump right into it and introduce what that geometric object is. Alright, tangent to a circle. A tangent to a circle is a line which no matter how far you extend it intersects the circle exactly once. So in this particular diagram line M is tangent to circle O at point A. All right, And again it's not going to hit there any other point. It doesn't do something like this. We'll give a name to, to that kind of thing later on. But right now that's it. A tangent hits a circle just once and then kind of goes merrily on its way if you will. All right, let me switch over to blue real quick and then let's start diving in to some work with tangents. All right, let's take a look at exercise number one. In circle A shown below, lines M and N are tangent to the circle at points B and C respectively. Draw in radii AB and AC. So we've got these two tangents, line M, line N. They're tangent at point B and point C down there. And all I want you to do is take your ruler, straight edge, whatever, and draw in radii, radii AB and AC. Take a moment, pause the video, and do that. Alright, well I'm going to do it really quick too, so that we've got them up there. Let me uh, get this like this. And draw in that radii, or that radius, mm -hmm. as the case would be. And this radius. All right, so that's kind of cool. Simple enough. Now letter B asks, what appears to be the relationship between the tangent lines and the radii that were drawn? All right, what, what appears to be the case between, and you can just concentrate on one set like M and AB or N and AC, what appears to be the case? All right, well hopefully you would say that the tangent, the tangents appear to be perpendicular to the radii. All right, let's take a look at that just for A, C, and N. I've got my protractor already here. All right, and whoops, of course I had to rotate it some there, not intentionally. But yeah, what we can certainly see is it appears, maybe shrink this thing down now a little bit, it certainly appears that right, our tangent line N is perpendicular to our radius AC. And we would see the same thing up here as well. All right? And that is maybe the most important idea of all with tangents. That they are perpendicular to the radii at the point of tangency. Let's take a look at that a little bit in the next slide. It's really an amazing, amazing thing, and we're going to prove it in just a bit in the slyest of ways, kind of one of the coolest ways ever. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for our GeoGebra widget to open up here, and then we'll kind of take a look at the phenomenon a little bit more. So in this particular slide, what we've got is we've got circle A, okay, and we've got radius AD drawn in, and tangent line CD, and you can see that it's making that 90 degree angle. It doesn't particularly matter where that tangent is drawn from. The tangent line then is always perpendicular, always perpendicular to that radius, always making that 90 degree angle. All right? And this is important because it will allow us to solve all sorts of different problems that involve radii and tangents to a circle that also involve 90 degree angles. Okay? But first, let's go ahead and prove this. Now, the key to proving that the tangent line to a circle is always perpendicular to the radius is this. 
The shortest distance from any point to a line is the length of the perpendicular line segment drawn from the point to the line. All right, and again, forgetting about this just for a minute, remember what that means. If I've got some point, right, and I've got some line, and I want you to go in the shortest path from this point to this line, the shortest path will always be the length of this line segment. Okay, and that's going to be the key to proving that the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius. So let's take a look at that. Whee. Maybe I can just do this a little bit faster. Here we go. Exercise number two. It says locate a point D on the diagram from exercise one anywhere on line M. Okay, anywhere on line M and draw AD. Just don't put it at B. So pick a point somewhere along M, draw a point in, mark it as D, okay, and then draw in AD, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it right here, but you put it anywhere you want, All right? And we're gonna draw in AD. Okay, easy enough. Now that you've got that done, letter A asks, how can you tell that the length of AD is longer than the length of AB? And I probably should have put something in this, like a question mark, I probably should have put something in this about saying, well, how can you tell that the length of AD is longer than the length of AB without a ruler? In fact, let me actually draw AB in. Not that we really need it in, but it's kind of nice to have it there. All right, why do I know that AD has to be longer than AB. What, what would you write down for that? Don't use the theorem about the perpendicularity. Just how do you know? Well, it's, it's quite simple. AD extends outside the circle. and is therefore, therefore, longer than the radius of the circle. Because remember, by definition, a tangent hits the circle only at one point. Right? which means the rest of the tangent must lie outside of the circle. If the tangent went inside of the circle, then it would have to hit the circle or intersect the circle more than once. But that means any point that lies along M right, is a farther distance away from A is than B. And that gets then down into this part. right? Letter B, why does this tell you that AB must be perpendicular to M? What would you write down for that? Ah, well, well, let me do this. A means that the shortest distance, oops, there goes my red, the shortest distance from A to line M occurs at point B. So AB must be perpendicular to M. There we go. Right? The shortest distance from any point to a line whatsoever, forget about the circle, the shortest distance from any line, from any point to a line, must be the length of the line segment that is perpendicular to that line. Right? That has to be it. And that, therefore, because AB must be the shortest distance between A and M, right? then AB must be perpendicular to M.
How do we know it's the shortest distance between A and line M? Because any other point that we put along M connected to A will create a segment that is clearly longer than AB because it's longer than a radius of the circle. All right, it's really kind of a neat argument. Let me step out of the way so that you can see the argument and write anything down you need to. All right, from now on, since we've got the theorem, we're just gonna use it, all right? Now again, the important thing is you know somewhat knowing why it's perpendicular. The tangents are perpendicular to the radii, but you also just need to know it as a fact. You need to have it memorized. So let's work with it and see why. Taking a look at a classic problem, exercise number three. In circle K, segment AB is tangent to the circle at point A. If the radius of the circle has a length of five units, eh, why don't we write that down? And the tangent has a length of 12 units, right? Then what is the length of KB? Okay. Well, again, the key here is the fact that this radius, AK or KA, is perpendicular to this tangent, AB. So we can throw that little perpendicularity in, and what that now means, of course, is that triangle KAB is a right triangle. And if you absolutely need to, you could draw that right triangle separately, and that's never a bad thing. Right? It would look a little bit like that. Okay, we know that this is 5, we know this is 12. We're looking for the length of KB or BK. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. And why don't you go ahead and solve for C? Take a moment to do that. All right, let's go through it. Simple enough, many of you probably have seen this one enough that you probably already know that c is 13, but let's go through the math really quick. 5 squared plus 12 squared is c squared. 125 plus 144 is c squared. That's 169 is c squared. Take the square root of both sides, and c is 13. All right, again, not an overly difficult problem. The key here is the fact that we have to recognize that that's a right triangle. And the only way to recognize that this is a right triangle is by knowing that Ka is perpendicular to AB. All right, again, let me step out of the way so that you can look at the Pythagorean theorem a bit, and then we'll move on to the next problem. All right, let's do it. An interesting consequence of the tangent theorem. All right. Um, consequences, simple consequences of theorems are called corollaries. You don't need to particularly know that, but this is a corollary of the tangent theorem. All right. So let's take a look. All tangents drawn from a given point to a circle, all two of them, will be the same length. All right. So it's kind of interesting because if I've got a circle, all right, and any point not on the circle, let me make that point a little bit larger so you can actually see it, and any point not on the circle, there are exactly two tangents that can be drawn to the circle. And what I'm claiming is that those two tangents will have the same length. And what we're going to do is prove that in this particular problem. So let's do it. Let's take a look. Um, in exercise number four, it says in the following diagram, tangents BC and BD are drawn. All right. And I've already put the 90 degree angles in there. All right, that's that theorem that says, all right, if BC and BD are tangents, then they're going to be perpendicular to radius AC and AD. All right. And letter A just asks, why can we say that ACB is congruent to ADB? So why do these two triangles have to be congruent? Think about that for a moment. Try to write something down, a little mini geometry proof here. All right, well, let's take a look at what we know at this point. Remember, what we know, okay? What we know is that AC and AD are the same length because they're both radii. So let's, let's actually write that down. AC is congruent to AD, and I guess all radii. <laughs> That's kind of nice, are the same length. Maybe I can actually get rid of that. Nope, there we go. Well, that doesn't look too much better. All right, all radii are the same length. Now, obviously, we also know that these two are right angles. Okay, so finally, 
we also know that the, this shared side is congruent to itself. You know, AB is congruent to AB, right? That's the reflexive property. It's been a little while since we've seen our friend the reflexive property. Make that look like, a, look like an E, the reflexive property. So why do I know that these two triangles are congruent? Well, it seems like I could have like side angle side, except for the angles that I know are equal aren't between the two side pairs that I know are equal. So it's not side angle side. But I do know that I've got two right triangles. These two legs are congruent and their hypotenuses are congruent. So the two triangles are congruent. They're congruent by hypotenuse leg by hypotenuse leg. And then to finish it off, why does this prove that the tangents have the same length? Why do I now know that BC and BD have to be the same length? It's been a little while, but why is that? Ah, so BC is congruent to BD by CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's been a little while since we've seen our friend CPCTC and mangled its name. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So those two lengths have to be the same because these two right triangles are the same. All right, let me step back a little bit. You can write anything down you need to. Then we'll move on and do some more problems involving this fact. All right, let's do it. So, last problem, exercise number five. In the diagram below, circle O is inscribed in triangle ABC so that it is tangent at points D, E, and F as shown. If AD is four, so this is four, BF is six, and CE is seven, um, then determine the perimeter of triangle ABC. All right, well, this is an exceptionally easy problem because the idea here, right, is that since AD is four, AE must be four as well. All right, since BF is six, BD must be six as well. Because CE is seven, CF must be seven as well. So the perimeter is easy enough. We could add up those three sides and then multiply by two. That would work. Or we could just add up all the numbers that are on the picture. Either way, we would find that the perimeter is 34. That's it. But this problem is utilizing the fact that if I draw two tangents from B to this circle, if that one has a length of six, that one has to have a length of six. It's pretty much that easy. All right, think about this a little bit and then we'll wrap up. All right, let's do it. So what we saw today was a whole new idea, the idea of a tangent, right? And you've seen these a little bit in Algebra 1 when you saw parabolas that were tangent to the x-axis. They kind of came down, hit the x-axis, and then went right back up. Now we've got this general idea that if we have a circle and we have a line that's extended forever in two directions and it only touches the circle once, that's known as a tangent. The single most important thing about tangents, bar none, is the fact that tangents are perpendicular to the radii drawn from the center of the circle at the point of tangency. And then that gives rise to all sorts of different facts, including the last one, which is if I draw two tangent segments, two tangent segments from an exterior point on the circle, those two segments will have the same length. All right, but you do want to watch out because tangent problems can involve anything that has right triangles in them. That includes the Pythagorean theorem and of course our friend right triangle trigonometry. So watch for that on the homework set. For now, I'd like to just thank you for joining me for another Common Core video by e Common Core Geometry video, sorry, by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.